Well, everybody, we're the Southern Diplomats from Hamilton. And we're here to shake your tail feathers, so uh, we're going to play some authentic 50s rockabilly for you, so uh, hope you cats are going to enjoy this. Thank you. Sammy's going to sing a song before you now called Nickels and Dimes. I've been trading up dimes for nickels over you. My golden years keep slipping out of you. But from the rocking nights to the working days, from Cadillacs to I'm trading up the downs for the nickels over you oh, With my long gold chain and my chitinary rocker A stabbing on a blonde can a black Johnny Walker A two-night jobs and a sidetrack woman And all the hard work to keep a satisfied woman I've been trading up the downs for the nickels over you My golden years keep it slipping out of you Get 
Just what I mean if you don't dig boy. Dig boy, dig, dig boy, dig boy. Hey. Dig boy, dig boy. You gotta dig, dig boy, dig boy. You gotta dig, dig boy. Get ahead in the world. You gotta stretch out those nickels or those pennies too. Cause old mother nature gave the best to you. It's time to change. You better get wise or you find yourself slipping like a lot of other guys if you don't dig boy. I'd like to introduce the band to you. I've got Sammy Kimberbell here on guitar. In the jailhouse over there is Mr. Viren Bigwood, and I'm Big Side Crowfoot, so thanks. A little song here called Broken Heart. Here's a favorite of everybody in the rockabilly scene. It's probably the first song that most people have latched onto rockabilly with, and it's by the brilliant Johnny Burnett, Rockabilly Boogie.
rockabilly to the break of the hit. So rock, 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 rockabilly boogie. Rock, rock, rockabilly boogie. Rock, rock, rockabilly boogie tonight. Where the kid off the shoes getting ready to rock. They're going to rockabilly or wearing the socks. You really ain't fit till you feel the thrill. Come on, everybody, do the rockabilly to the hit. So rock, rock, rockabilly boogie. Rock, rock, rockabilly boogie. Rock, rock, rockabilly boogie. are awesome.
loving on my mind I'm a coming home Gonna make some love I'm a coming home Sweet turtle love I'm a coming home To make sweet love to you Honey, she ain't nothing to me I'm a coming home Gonna make some love I'm a coming home Sweet turtle love I'm a coming home To make sweet love to you I'm a dog in it and I'm a coming home Gonna make some love, I'm a coming home Sweet turtle dove, I'm a coming home To make sweet love to you to do for a beautiful song called Whenever I'm Ready by Mr. Bob Lumen. It's a real classic, love it. Love it.
you and a girl for me Well, babe, we ought to see the preacher tonight Let's do this thing I ride Let's fall in love Let's fall in love Let's fall in love Let's fall in love Thank you we just got one more song for you this afternoon, and uh, it's the last one, but it's a goodie, so this is a rock and roll jump and jive. Hey, grab your potter, get on the floor. Everybody ready, going to rock some more. We're going to rock, we're going to roll, we're going to jump, we're going to jive. We're going to rock and roll, jump and jive tonight. So we're 90 years old, we're gonna rock, we're gonna roll, we're gonna jump, we're gonna jive, we're gonna rock and roll, jump and jive tonight. Lynn here, Sound Tree Live. Another Sunday afternoon in the beautiful Bay of Plenty, New Zealand. And with us today we have a band that you all just would have heard play some music that stirs you right deep in your soul with your memories. The Southern, welcome Southern Diplomats. You guys just were, I haven't seen anything like that to be honest. That was just absolutely stunningly brilliant just absolutely brilliant, you know, it's walked you down memory lanes and stuff like that. Would you be kind enough to introduce yourselves and tell tell everybody a little bit about yourselves, please? Okay, I'm Simon Croker, I'm from the UK. Got together about maybe two, two and a half years ago with Sammy Kimber Bell here and I just decided he was out of a band, I, I was out of my old band and decided to put a good rocking band together and uh, after the first drummer was Fired. We got Mr. Bigwood here after having only just met him actually at the very vintage day out in Auckland. He was playing with a, a Taronga band called Molly Gun here uh, over there and uh, approached him to come and have a couple of jams with us. And you stole them. And words. basically, well, his black panel was, was folding as well, so he walked in and stepped right into his, with some good shoes. So, um, yeah, it was exactly what we wanted in a band. So, yeah, we've got a great little 
tight unit now. And just so how long ago was that? Oh, that? About two and a half years ago. About two and a half years ago. Okay, so you're a Tauranga boy? Yeah, I'm from Tauranga. Would you like to tell people a little bit about yourself and where, where you've been with your musical career? Oh, yeah, it's been a long one. Uh, played in a lot of punk bands along the way, okay. a few cover bands. One other rockabilly band from okay. Waihee Beach. Okay. Yeah, that's a few years ago. And uh, yeah, these guys now. We've got another band on the side as well, so Probably maybe good. we'll see them out here one day. Don't know. Hope so, that'd be cool. Yeah. And you, young man, with that fabulous guitar. What a beautiful, beautiful guitar. And uh, you know, it's sort of, that in itself is nostalgia, just looking at it the beauty in that guitar, you know, you, we look at all these strats and stuff like this, but then you look at something like that and uh, tell us a wee bit about yourself. About myself, um, well, I like to drink beer. Ha ha! And, um, <laughs> <laughs> Especially on a day like this. And so I, uh, I joined this band because um, Simon decided that we should meet up for a beer and I said, oh, yeah, I like beer. And then uh, we, um, that's the only reason you came, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, you <laughs> said you want to come out for a beer. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> yeah, I said, okay. <laughs> and then we um, we found out that we were playing at the same um, this music festival in Northampton in, in England with different bands, wow. which was was quite it's amazing. A small world, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'd heard of I've heard of, I'd heard of Simon from his, um, his bands in the eighties. Okay. So I thought, oh yeah, I'll, I'll be in a band with you. And, it's, and coincidentally, you know, just. I, I emigrate to New Zealand, living in the same band as, as basically the only other psychobilly band in, in New Zealand comes from, and uh, he just happens to have that chance thing of not playing with that band anymore, you know, and yeah. moving on, and we formed something and we've got something brilliant here, you know, so it's, yeah, it's good fun in this band. And there is plenty of beer drinking as well, practice. <laughs> so it always makes a good practice. Okay, so I, I gather that a lot of people, and correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of people would, like, you do, somebody just said to me outside that you're very, very busy, and I'm not at all surprised that you know you're busy. Yeah, they've got a few things coming up now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and lots of weddings, or yeah, played, do you? Played some weddings, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and birthday parties for maybe people that that music stirs the nostalgia of, you know, maybe somebody's 80th birthday or something. I mean, yeah, that, that yeah. bass player, that playing <clears> that bass, this is like another person to me. This, this, it's, it's like a person. Well, I've got my girl over there, my wife, but that's also my second wife, really, you know, so. <laughs> that's, um, no, but we're, we're open for any gigs, any people approach us and uh, want to book us, um, we're open to play anything, you know, so. Okay. Yeah, not, it's not, we don't, we don't say, oh, we're strictly playing for the, the rockabilly crowd, you know. But Is that's, there a that, strictly rockabilly crowd? Is what, that? in New Zealand? Yes. Um, there, there is a, a, a little small scene here, you know, it's not like being in the, in the UK or Europe, you know, where um, where that scene is massive, you know, so, um, yeah, it's, it's here, here with, with the scene in New Zealand, it's, it's growing, it's growing, but uh, we're trying to educate, educate people on rockabilly out there, really. There's so is it true that there's, an, in Hamilton, um, that there's some place that you're Somebody said it looks like a jukebox or something. Oh, the jukebox diner, yeah, they've been absolutely brilliant in embracing us. Um, I bet. Yeah, yeah, we played there, um, like they have petrol head breakfasts there, where all the American cars come and they have, have a, a breakfast there and they go on a Sunday morning and we'll just break, break out with our music and uh, entertain these people who are eating there. So, yeah, it's good. And we've done a few night dances there as well. Hey. So, yeah, it's good times at the diner. Hey, yeah, yeah. It'd be fabulous, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely amazing. Because a lot of people that would be listening to your music would be remembering the, the likes of their uncles or their yeah, dads, yeah, sure. and you yeah. know. And it's romantic. The the music and the lyrics, you know, yeah. it's it's got a lot of romance in yeah, it. And, you know, just looking at your wife here, just you know, and and your lady here, and the, their beautiful hair. I wish they'd come just. And pop on in here beside me because it's a really, really feminine and it's it's just a beautiful, sexy actually. It's yeah, it a is. sexy it's hero, good. isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The blokes look really smooth and suave and you know, yeah, yeah. 
we find it a pretty vibrant scene actually for, for us, you know, like um, it's a very positive scene actually. Yeah. You know, it's, it's good happy music and um, it is. It is. Yeah. So if people wanted to know more about you or, or uh, know how to contact you, how, how would we go about doing that, you know, for those people that... Uh, we're contactable through Facebook. Yes. Uh, it's probably the easiest way to get hold of us. So what would people... Without giving out phone numbers and email addresses and the likes. I bet all the girls do that for you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> give your friend's phone number. Post yeah, it you could give them my phone number. So everyone can see it. <laughs> Facebook yeah, page. no, Facebook's probably the easiest way to And that's on the Southern Diplomats? Yeah. And ladies and single. Oh, yeah. oh, you're single. There you go, ladies. Yeah. You'd be, you'd be flash mob wherever you go now, yeah, eh? Just about. Oh, <laughs> I know, I know. So, who are your influences, like, you know, to, to get this rockabilly and stuff? Uh, I've, been been listening, I've, I've been listening to this stuff since about 1980. Okay. So it's been quite a long time and initially it started off with the Stray Cat stuff which actually brought Rockabilly back out of the woodwork and, and put, it, put it into a, a more uh, obtainable form for everybody really and uh, it's funny, like I was so passionate about them back in, in the 80s but I've actually, that's dwindled a bit now and I've gone back further and seeking out all these real original 50s guys who, was, uh, who were really um, bringing out fantastic songs and, yep. and records back then. So uh, people like Johnny Burnett, Charlie Feathers, Matt Curtis, Curtis Gordon, Ronnie Self, the, the list's endless actually. And uh, But brilliant songs have got a good bit of attitude to them. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that, that guitar that, that you played there, that style, you know, was it just, you know, because you're just a youngster really, aren't you really? I um, mean, it was, it was never a, a big ambition to own a, a like a Gretsch guitar. I'd always kind of wanted to go away from from the norm of the, the style, but then it was cheap, so I bought it. <laughs> it, was, it was the best guitar that I could find for the money I had, and um, it was about half the price that it normally would be, so I had to get one, really. But it's all of the, the, um, like the neo-rockabilly players, like Brian Setsy, he's got his own custom series of those type of guitars and yep. they just um, a friend of mine had the same guitar and I played on it and I thought well there's nothing that compares to that tone even with the just the straight from the factory kind of set up it's just it's just the way it sounds it just is okay. rockabilly so. and those guitars are like synonymous with rockabilly yeah. really you know Mostly, unless you've got a, a proper vintage guitar, most people go out and, and buy these Gretsch guitars because they're such a good-looking guitar, and they give you that it's nice a vintage tone as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, did you have um, a rockabilly in, in your history? But did you hear before you met this gentleman here? And I presume you were out playing punk somewhere, so you, you know, we're pogoing to you yeah. somewhere in our mosh pits and stuff like that. But, but for you. Where did Rockabilly fit in before um, you met him? Anyway, that's funny though because, because like Simon was saying, the Stray Cats. I probably heard the same album just 20 years later, and it's, yeah. it started off the exact same kind of way. Yeah. I um, I was probably about 17, and this anonymous Lisa arrived, and it was the Stray Cats' first album. <laughs> so I listened oh, to that. Okay. And yes. Yeah. That was it. it was, I was okay. into jazz and stuff and punk and. And um, in trying to combine jazz and punk, and um, I guess someone had decided, oh yeah, that sounds like rockabilly, and then sent me that CD, and then from there it turned into psychabilly, which is a combination of rockabilly and punk rock, pretty much. And so, oh. so I've been in a psychabilly band for the last eight years until till this started. And then, okay, yeah. how cool is that? So, have you done any recording? What's coming up? What's coming up for you guys? Um. Well, we've done. Uh, we did do a, a live recording through a friend of mine, uh, yep. just in the garage, just ten tracks bang straight off the bat, and didn't turn out too badly actually. But uh, we're hoping in, in the near future to write some original material and yes. maybe go and record some of that stuff. So okay. yeah, there are plans for that. Yeah. So you'll have a big fan base, both of you actually, having played in the UK. So yep. when when the show 
is is on the air in, in a week's time or everything, then, you know, I gather it's going to take the UK by storm. We'll be you showing it all over the world. You, you will. keep on will. showing it all, all our over fans, the world. For and sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's how it all happens, because we're just such a little country, yeah. you know, that unless we do this for our musicians, you know, then we're only four million odd people, you know, we, we've got to really push our music and it yeah. deserves to be pushed, you know. So please, please help with doing that, everybody. Like it and share it. Weren't they fabulous? Yeah. That bass playing was was pretty awesome to watch too, you. you know. You don't actually get to see that very often. No, it's not played in style like if you're playing jazz, you mostly just plucking it. Yeah. But it's slapping that bass. So, yeah. 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 So, uh, psychobilly, bluegrass, and uh, rockabilly are about the only three forms of music that has that style of playing really. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so did you did you pick that up? That it's huge to me. Yeah. Did, or did you start with a normally sized bass or? Uh, in or my first it? band, my first rockery band, way back in the eighties, um, I started playing electric bass. Yep. But I just knew that that wasn't me. Yeah. And then um, here's when I got double bass, and I never I've never played bass, bass guitar since. So wow. yeah. It's, you got a little girl here? Yep. Hey, how old is she? Uh, 19, almost 20 months, I think. She wanted to dance. She did, yeah. She, she did likes want to dance. To dance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how delightful that is, eh? Hey? She's mm -hmm. been such a good girl here today. It's it's a hot day in the studio, yet again. And here she is. She's not even two years of age, but her daddy was up there playing, and all she wanted to do was dance. And she was just awesome. It's just beautiful, yeah. Good nice family about, man and it's a good it's a good thing about this band it's not we're not playing in pubs at three o'clock in the morning we're playing sometimes like you know eight not yet Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> we're playing at eight o'clock in the morning so i can yeah. i can bring my daughter along and yeah it's more family events and it's quite good yeah hey how beautiful is that how beautiful is that you know yeah we're all a little bit um beyond the three o'clock in the pubs i think of course not. If it turns, if it, if, it, if it turns out to be, to be like that, then that's what happens. But um, yeah. yeah, we don't go out going. Oh, yeah. Well, you want us, want us to start at two a.m.? Yeah, no problem. But we probably would. If you you probably asked. would, yeah, wouldn't you? Asked. They would. But not out of choice. You know, if they said, "Oh, we've got a gig where you start at nine o'clock or ten o'clock," that's, that's cool. You know? Yeah. yeah. Is that because you are also a family man? You know, I thought you were going to say is that because you're an old man. Here she comes. Here she comes. Oh, oh, we got uh, look oh at this. thank you. It's a snack. Hey, how cute was that? Did we get her on film? Hey. Come and see Daddy. Come and see Daddy. Look at this. Here's a rockabilly hi. fan, folks. Hey. Do you want to say hi to the camera? That's a camera. Hey, hi. What's her name, Daddy? Belle. Belle Check Monroe. Check that out for a name. Her name is Belle, and Daddy plays in a rockabilly band. Hey, doesn't that just make you smile on the inside, just hearing that? It's, it's gorgeous, just gorgeous. Well, thank you so, so very much for coming along here today and, you know, being a part of Soundtree Live. And uh, thank you to Soundtree, to the crew, yet again on a Sunday afternoon. Awesome, as always. Hey, deliver, deliver. Do we deliver? Yes, yeah. we do. Bob the Builder. Huh. I'd just like to say thanks for inviting us because we've had a, a ball. It's been a, a brilliant day and uh, yeah, just thanks for letting us be part of it. So It's been our total yeah. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.